sorry about that. All right. Evaluation is the powerhouse of Toastmasters. I'm well known for that phrase. I'm sure it isn't mine originally, but it just came to me one day because I do believe that if you can evaluate, you can speak better. You can communicate better. Evaluation, feedback, it's if you can get it right, being able to give to a fellow human being feedback that they can take to use, them, use themselves to be able to develop and grow is one of the most powerful gifts you can give to somebody else in this world. But you've got to get it right. And for many people, I think evaluation is frightening. It's frightening because you've got to give some feedback to somebody. You've got to tell somebody. It's easy to do that, oh, you did that well. But the bit that frightens, I think, a lot of people is you've also got to tell somebody where they didn't do so well. But within Toastmasters, with evaluation, there is a good way of doing that. Because this is a positive organisation, we will tell somebody that they didn't do that well in that area, or what we would say is where they could improve. We will give them recommendations. So what happens in Toastmasters, we not only say, yeah, that didn't go so good, but here's how you could make it better. So we give the tools to anybody to do that. Evaluations, the main ones, I'm going to focus on the speech evaluation, but what I say applies just as much to table topics evaluation, grammarian, R counter as well, and the general evaluator. The first thing I would say is that any evaluation, like anything else within Toastmasters, it's a speech. It is a speech. And like every other speech, as we learn as we go through the Competent Communicator Manual, starting with Project 2, Organise Your Speech, it should have an opening, a middle, and an end. Before I forget and go too far into this, and there are a couple of handouts that you're quite welcome to take afterwards. One of them is some thoughts about how to make your evaluations better before, during, and after the speech that you're evaluating. And the other is a sheet that I use when I take notes for an evaluation. I'm not recommending anybody does what I do these days because I don't take notes anymore. I, for a long time, have delivered evaluations without notes, but I now am on a challenge for the last year or so, well, two years probably now, to try and also not take notes. That's my person. I wouldn't say for everybody to do that. This is because a person at a conference, that I, one of the contests I was at, the evaluation contest, Simon Bucknell, about six years ago, I watched him win the evaluation contest. And he was the first time I'd ever seen anybody deliver without notes. Now, it was a competition, so it was a show. He was putting on a performance, but he delivered without notes. I was then, three years ago, honoured to be able to represent my area, my club, at the district final over in Dublin, well, Dunleary. I was fortunate because I actually came second in the division contest, and the guy who won it had forgotten he was going to a wedding in Germany, so he couldn't go, so I went. I got through the semi-final and got to the final. Simon was in that competition. What I watched that day, having watched him closer, was he sat there, took no notes, just absorbed, absorbed what happened with the speaker. When we went into the, what you get for a competition is five minutes to prepare your speech, had no notes, he just went up and down, walking and visualising what he was going to say in his mind. So I went on a personal crusade for myself, is to challenge myself to be able to do that. I'm okay at it, but I do keep persevering and getting better at it. But I would say for most people, take notes and use notes if you feel comfortable. Those are my challenges. I'm not recommending those for everybody else, but you can. <clears throat> but what I've got there is a sheet that shows what I do use when I do use a sheet. <clears throat> so we say the evaluation has got three parts. It's a speech, but like any speech, we need to prepare it. And that's what the sheet is for. Because we're going to watch, observe the speech, what the person says, how they say, how do they use the stage? What is the purpose of the speech? What did you, the key thing I look for is what do I get from this speech? 
and the speech, the piece of paper that I use here, because I'm going to flip chart so I can't write it up, <clears throat> it's fairly simple. Top, I've got the name and the title of the speech, I could put that in before. The top bit says, speech main points, that's where I write down some key points from the speech, and I also write down, what am I getting from this speech? Is it hitting me there, or is it hitting me there? What message am I getting? What am I getting from this speech? So those are, it isn't about regurgitating the speech, telling everybody what the speech is, because we all know that, because we watch the speech. This is for you to find out. And then the second two parts here is commend, recommend, what they did well, what they didn't do, what they could do better. Those ones, usually when I'm writing that, I will write one or two words down. Trigger words to remind me of that particular <coughs> point. Like, if it was a good point, eye contact. If it was a bad point, or point to improve, eye contact. If it's eye contact, it's maybe just say, to the left. So it reminds me of the person we're using, talking to the left a lot more than to the right. So you put those together, it gives you the basis to put an evaluation together. An evaluation is your opinion. And everybody here in this room has a right to an opinion. Doesn't mean, as we have found in the break, that we all agree with each other. I have the right to my opinions, you have the right to your opinions, you have the right to different ones. An evaluation is an opinion. As some of us will know when they get their feedback slips from speeches, you will look at a particular point and most people say, you did really well on whatever it was. But then you'll find maybe one or two, if there's quite a few people in the room, who'll write on the same point and say, that wasn't so good, I think you need to improve, because they saw it different. So that's what I'm meaning, is these are your opinions, and somebody out in the audience might not agree with you. That's fine, because it is your own opinion. When you are delivering an evaluation, I tend to, wherever possible, to use it in the third person. Try to do it tonight when I'm evaluating Andy, and talk to the whole room. Because although the evaluation is to the person who's spoken, the points that you are talking about are for everybody in the room. They are points that many of us in the room could take on board as well. Because in Andy's case, what he delivered tonight, what my evaluation will be of that, and you'll have to wait to see that, there are points that many of us in the room, when we do our speeches, probably will do the same things things we do well, things we could improve on, but the same things. There will be others, but there will be. So there is that inclusiveness of everybody. So that's why I talk in the third person. I will talk about, did you see, what? we'll see what happens later, did you see what Andy did in this particular bit? So you bring the audience in. Two reasons for that. One, it means that the rest of the audience doesn't feel shut out if I spend three minutes going, Andy, you did this, Andy, you did that, Andy, you need to work on this. The rest of you could go to sleep for three minutes. If it's inclusive, it's bringing everybody in and makes it a better speech. Some people disagree on that point. It's how you feel, but that's how I believe. And certainly if you go into competitions, you've got to use that because you're actually trying to engage the audience even more so there. The fear with evaluations for many people is I don't want to upset somebody. That is something that isn't easy when you start out, but the person who's being evaluated needs both the recommends and the commends. The recommends are probably more precious and I understand they are hard and I'll be honest and this probably I shouldn't say but I always will admit in the early days when we started the first club I pitched an evaluation wrong and that person never came back. I upset them. I thought they were a harder person, harder shelled person than what they were. And I obviously said something that night that they didn't like and they took offence and went home. I had to think about that. And what, it, what I learned from that is your evaluation has to be pitched to the person who you're going to deliver it to. I would deliver a different evaluation to an icebreaker person than I would to an experienced speaker. If I was doing it to an advanced speaker such as Andrew or Sheila, 
I would be far more nitpicky. I would pick up on little things because they've had the experience, they should know better, and people will do that to me. But if it's somebody's first speech, you pitch it, and but you pitch it even there differently. Because if the person has got some confidence and delivers a good speech, we've seen a lot recently, where people deliver without notes even as an icebreaker. Because you can, if you want to stand up and read your speech, type it out and read it. It's about just being at the front. But if the person has shown some skills, then you may give a little bit more feedback on where they could improve. If they stood here rigid with fear, then the evaluation is going to be far more supportive because the big thing they've done is stand here and deliver. The rest of it isn't expected, so why should you evaluate it? You would only give them points of how they could then work on maybe, rather than holding the lectern as so often happens, is let go of the lectern, maybe try a little gesture or put the lectern to one side, work on different things that gradually move it through. I believe, as I've said, evaluation is the powerhouse of Toastmasters. To evaluate will help you speak better. The more you evaluate, the more you will improve your speaking. By watching what other people do in their speeches and then taking that and using it in what you do with your speeches, can be profound at times. It's not just about what you do, it's what other people do. Yes, there are times where you say, I like that, I'll have that, I'll try that technique. But there is also, do you know, I do that. I ought to start cutting it out because I can see how it looks from somebody else. You quite often can't see these things in yourself. I still struggle with my table topics, but everybody keeps telling me because I do a washing machine with my hand. <laughs> And sometimes I become a twin tub because I do that. I have no idea, but I'm working on it. It used to be that, but it's turned to that. So I'm getting somewhere. <coughs> it's taken 15 years to get there. But the feedback is telling me all that's said now is, Michael, washing machine. I tend to do it a lot at York. I don't know why, just at York I do it a lot. But all the words is, Michael, washing machine again. I know what it is. But the feedback is telling me things I don't realise I'm doing. So you do need these points to come through to you. We're going to see some evaluations tonight. We're going to see some different styles, techniques. What I would say, none of them are totally none of them right, none of them are wrong. They are each person's style and way of delivering an evaluation. People, my partner Gillian is very much into having lots of points and giving lots of structure. She's brilliant at doing a club evaluation. I I think I've proved I am better at doing a competition evaluation because I can put a show on if I've got a big audience as well as giving some points but I don't give as many points in a competition I don't get through as many points and as what's shown is I've managed when I get to the final I came third she didn't she did a club evaluation I did a competition evaluation they are a different thing so stick to your club evaluations make notes but make them clear when I do commend and recommend, because we're getting lots of points, one of the keys with a speech, like anything else, it only needs so many points. And we have what we would call the sandwich. Call it other things. But it's the sandwich, which is we start out, after we've done our introduction of what we got from the speech, and I try to, wherever possible, use something from the speech as my opening line, we have a couple of points. Do a couple of points of commends, where somebody's done well. Then a couple of improves, recommends. Then finish with a, another commend where the person did well. And if possible, summarise it. Certainly if it's competition, <coughs> summarise and use the words in conclusion or in summary. I had to be taught that one. But also, but do it, that's your ending. Just, but don't go over the four or five points again. Just summarise. You know, you need to do this, you need to do that. And just, just to say, just work on that, work on that. And that's going to be a great speech. So there's ways of developing it. And think about how you've got, you've got two, two and one, an opening and an end. You've got three and a half minutes. Think about how long you spend on certain areas. I, when I'm not trying, when I'm not prepared or my mind's distracted for other things, I will spend too long because I can talk for England on the opening of what I got from the speech and leave myself too little time to do the recommends. I would suggest in a speech, you need to be getting on to your commends, sorry, your recommends, Gone through your commends, onto your recommends where you can improve when the green comes up. 
you need to be through and already started and done the commends. If you're only just starting to do what you did well, that means you've used two of your three and a half minutes on the opening bit, so you're going to be misstructured and going to rush through the rest. And tonight you've probably seen me do that, but I'm hoping not. <laughs> so those are just some thoughts of mine to go through. A couple of handouts, please take them at the end of the evening if you wish. Use them. Each find your own style, your own way of doing it. This is my style. It's the way I worked it out. Others do other things. But all I would say is, don't shirk away from evaluation. Don't avoid evaluation. Don't say, no, I can't do it. I am not got enough experience. Because if you've been to a meeting, you have the right as a living, breathing human being to give your opinions so anybody can do evaluation. And always remember, evaluation. Powerhouse of Toastmasters.